Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this lesson for engineering economics, we're going to be looking at what depreciation is and in particular at straight line depreciation. Now, for our projects, we are going to be making a capital investment. A capital investment is sort of the sum of all of the cash that I need to have on hand for fixed capital and working capital. The fixed capital is all the cost associated with the new construction. So this means I buy land, I buy equipment, and I install everything. I you know, have buildings, I have parking lots, I have catwalks, etc. Now, land is not going to be depreciated, so we're going to split that up so that the fixed capital investment is going to be the fixed capital investment without land. We'll put a subscript L for that, plus the land. So this is the total amount that we have for fixed capital. And then there's also going to be some working capital. And this is how much money I need to have on hand so that I can pay employees, buy raw materials, buy lab supplies, etc. Now, I'm not going to be able to depreciate this working capital either because at the end, I'm no longer going to need to buy any more raw materials and I'll recuperate this money. We also are going to need to deal with a salvage value. Salvage value will designate as an S. This is going to be the value of the fixed capital investment other than the land at the end of the project. Often this is going to be zero, but sometimes I may be able to you know, use things for scrap metal or find someone who would be happy to take my storage tanks off the hand to use for another purpose. Okay, So there may be a salvage value. It's usually a small portion of the original fixed capital investment. The life of the equipment, we're going to be using N to designate that. This is going to be set by the IRS in the United States. It isn't actually truly related to the actual equipment life, but this is something that all the accountants and end users got together and agreed on. This will be an acceptable value for taxation purposes. Depreciation really is only useful because of taxes. So therefore, a lot of this is going to be based on law and not necessarily logic. So this um, life, you know, for instance, the IRS may state that a car has a life of three years, but I know that I am likely to drive it for 10 years. But for the purpose of depreciation, I use what the IRS says, not what I think I'm going to really do. Now, the total capital that I will be able to depreciate is going to be the fixed capital investment with the exception of the land. And then I'm going to have to subtract off the salvage value because I'll be able to reclaim that at the end of the project. There's also going to be one other term that they're going to use periodically, and that's going to be the book value. So what is the value of my investment at any point in time? And this is going to be that fixed capital investment cost of purchasing all my new equipment and installing it and so forth. So the fixed capital investment without the land minus however much I have depreciated so far. There are many methods for doing depreciation. The simplest of these is straight line depreciation. This one to, I think most engineers is the one that's most logical, but there are many, many reasons why, but there are other methods that accelerate the depreciation during the early years and then kind of slow down later. Uh, the sum of the years digits method is one. The declining balance method is one. We'll be using the double declining balance, but there are variations on this. 
and then the modified accelerated cost recovery system. We'll be looking at these last three in a different video. In this one, we're just going to look at straight line depreciation. Now, whatever depreciation you use, you have to do whatever is in accordance with the law where you are filing your taxes. So in the United States right now, we're using the modified accelerated cost recovery system. But we're going to cover all of these um, partly because you may be asked to do this at some point in the future, but also just there's sort of a historicity to this that you ought to be aware of. So straight line depreciation. Basically, what the straight line depreciation says, you know, I'm going to be able to depreciate the fixed capital investment without the land and then subtract off the salvage. If I'm going to do this over, say, a five-year period, then I should just take that amount and divide it by five, and every year I will reduce my book value by that amount. Okay? So this is depreciation straight line. So the D for depreciation straight line, and then this is for the Kth year. Let's look at this in an example. So we have a capital investment of some equipment that costs $750,000 and is expected to have a salvage value of $50,000. We want to find the depreciation each year for the five-year life of the equipment using this method. So our formula simply says that for each year using the straight line depreciation method, I'm going to take the fixed capital investment, there is no land in this, so 750,000 minus 50,000, the salvage value, divided by the five year life. So 700,000 divided by five is 140,000 per year. So initially, my book value is initially $750,000. After my, I take my first year's depreciation, I subtract $140,000, so it's $610,000. The next year, the book value subtract another $140,000, subtract yet again, and let's see, I think I made a arithmetic mistake there. There we go, $330,000, and subtract once again, a hundred and one more time and so after each period of depreciation the value goes down by hundred forty thousand dollars and the final book value is equal to the salvage value in the next lesson, we're going to look at these other accounting methods for depreciation. Thank you very much for your time.